So epidermal lysis bullosa, it's a genetic disease. Uh, some call it a connective uh, disorder, some call it a connective tissue disease. Um, what you have in the skin and also in some of the other connective tissue in the body, you have what's called anchoring fibrils. Uh, your skin is, has multi layers and, and you have anchoring fibrils, which you think about as roots, say on grass, that hold the different layers intact. Those anchoring fibrils, regardless of the subtype of EB, are either defective or deficient. So what happens is the skin is very susceptible, it's very unstable, and it can shear. So the skin tears very easily. Um, a child, for example, using a pacifier, uh, would get a blister and just an open wound. That's how fragile their skin is. Uh, you'll see in the literature they're called sometimes butterfly children because they, they figure that their skin is as sensitive to the, as the wings of butterflies. So it tears very easily. Um, it's inherited from the, from the parents. It could be either a dominant form or a recessive form. So dominant, one of the, patient, one of the parents actually has the disease that's passed on 50-50 chance and the child has it. The other one, uh, which is recessive, where both parents are carriers, they don't manifest the disease. But if both of them pass that gene on, the child will have that disease, and the disease manifests at birth. So you'll see, once the child is born, that they will be born with either blistering, open wounds, or a combination of both. And it can be, it can be very egregious. Um, a child that we know about that was born up actually up in the Northeast about a year ago, the child was born, about 70% of the skin peeled off his legs down the birth canal. That's how egregious it can be. Um, so there's no treatment for it at all. Uh, so basically, the, the main reason that these children, some of them are very young, can die, and it's typically because of infection. Uh, you can think about if you've got open wounds, their, their immune system is already very immature, but they're very susceptible to get infection and septic and, and pass away. So the standard of care treatment is basically trying to minimize infection, keeping the sites clean. Um, it's also a very painful disease, so a lot of these children are on opiates at the beginning of birth, typically methadone and morphine. And that's just because the wound pain is just tremendous. Um, so those are the two ways that they just kind of maintain with these children. Um, another thing which, unfortunately, that they, they, they do, but to try to keep the wound burden down, is the children can't be bathed in a normal bath. Because you can think about if you put go into just regular water, you're going to pass the, the bacteria on to other parts of the body. They get bathed in either a mixture of bleach and vinegar. And that's because it's a very strong bacterial cytal product. So it'll actually kill them, try to kill the bacteria as best they can. So that's, that's the daily life in these children. It's really just to maintain um, preventing of, of an infection and also try to prevent further damage. And that's basically how they, what their daily care is.